you finally leveled up your painting game with fancy tapes and then this happens. Well, this is definitely not what we wanted. If you don't want it to happen ever again, what you can do is use a hair dryer. No, not like that, girl. <laughs> Once you're done with the painting, go over the tape with the hair dryer to slightly melt the sticky part underneath. This will make it a lot easier to remove the tape. And now you can easily peel it off without ruining your painting. Having art as a hobby isn't only frustrating for you, but also for your wallet. Especially when you want to get new paints like these fancy metallic acrylic paints. Don't worry, there's a hack for this. All you need to transform your regular acrylic paint into shiny metallic paint is one small bottle of silver acrylic paint. With only one shade of metallic paint such as silver, you can create as many metallic shades as you want. All you need to do is mix a little bit of the silver metallic paint into any color you like and mix it very well. The more of the metallic silver paint you add, the brighter and more shinier the metallic color will be in the end. And you can experiment with different amounts. You can use lots of the metallic paint and add just a tiny bit of any color you like. And the result is beautiful. With just one dot of red acrylic paint, I created this pretty rose color that is super shiny and so beautiful. And you can create pretty much any shade you want with just one shade of metallic silver acrylic paint. This is how your paint tubes usually end up looking. And even if you try to squeeze out everything, there is still so much paint that is inside that you just can't get out. Well, there's actually a pretty cool tool for that. And that's this tube squeezer. All you need to do is place the end of the tube inside this tool and then squeeze it through it just like that. Here you just need to close the tube between the two sides and then turn on the side to move the barrels and all the inside of the tube will get squeezed out. You can actually use it for other tubes like toothpaste and cream, so this is pretty much a game changer in my opinion, as it will save not only your nerves, but also your money. You know the struggle when it comes to sharpening your precious and expensive color pencils just to restore the tip, but you don't want to waste any of it because there's a chance that the pencil lid can break what you can do to get the most out of your pencils is to simply use fine sanding paper or a fine nail file to sharpen the tip. Move the pencil along the sanded surface and turn the pencil around so you sharpen it evenly. And voila, the pencil is ready to go. This way you not only get a super fine tip, but you can also save a lot of your pencil. Did you know that you can draw a perfect circle with just paper clips and pens? I know, that sounds crazy. Place the clip where you want to draw the circle and hold it with one pencil. And to draw a circle around this point, take another pencil or a pen of your choice and draw a circle at the end of the clip just like that. And voila! If you want to create a bigger circle, simply attach two or even more clips together and repeat the step. But if you want to make the circle a little bit smaller or a bit bigger, you can also open the clip and use the round edge the same way. Now, if you don't have any clips with you, you can also do that without any additional tools. I know that's even crazier, but it works. Place your bone that is right above your wrist onto some paper and hold the paper firmly, but still loosely. And then carefully move the paper around your hand while holding the pen down so it kinda pinwheels. It's important that you don't move your hand that is holding the pen at all. This way you get a perfect circle. This can take some practice, but as long as you hold the paper firmly but still loosely, you can do it. Just try it out. You can also try to use the side of your small finger. The steps are the same. Place the side of your small finger onto the paper and press it down firmly but still loosely and while you hold the pen on the paper, carefully move the paper around your hand. If it doesn't work the first time, don't worry, just practice a few times and you will be surprised with the result. In the end, you won't be able to stop drawing circles freehand because it's actually so easy and fun. 
Do you have one of those habits where you're just too lazy to clean your bottles of paint, glaze or glue that in the end the lids are glued together? Well, before you hurt your hand even further, here's a simple hack for you. Just use a silicone cupcake mold, place it on top of the lid and while you hold the lid, turn it around. The silicone cupcake mold will make it so easy to move the lid and open the bottle. That simple. You love drawing with pastels and charcoals, but this is how your hands look all the time after painting for a while. If you don't want to wash your hands every 5 minutes, you can just attach some tape around the end of the charcoal to keep your hands clean while you draw. Here I'm just using washi tape. And once you use up some of it, you can simply remove some of the tape and then keep drawing. And to avoid any further smudging while you draw, place a plain piece of paper underneath your hand while drawing. This will not only protect your drawing from your hand, but it will also make the drawing so much more comfortable. Super simple, but so helpful. You are finally done with your beautiful watercolor masterpiece, but your paper looks kind of similar to this, more wavy than flat. Don't worry, I have a very simple trick for you that will help you flatten the image. Spray a little bit of water onto the back of the paper, place a piece of fabric or paper on top just to protect your painting. And then iron everything on the medium or high settings, depending on your iron and the paper you're using. You just want to carefully even out the paper. Here it was watercolor paper so it was a bit thicker, so I had to use a hotter setting. Afterwards, place something heavy on top so the painting can cool down while keeping the flatness. After a few minutes, you can take out your painting and voila! The paper is flat like a pancake again. Did you know that you can use an ice cube tray for mixing watercolors and for creating as many shades and colors as you can fit in? Simply add a little bit of water to the tray and then you can load up your wet brush with paint and kinda clean the brush inside the tray to transfer the paint. The more paint you use, the darker the shade will get and the less paint you use and the more water you use, the lighter the color will be. Have you ever painted with watercolors and then realized <laughs> that something looks totally off and you wanted to fix it? Well, this happens to me all the time. <laughs> but instead of throwing the whole piece away, you can actually erase the paint. All you need are these dirt eraser sponges that are actually used for cleaning. But this works even with watercolors. Cut the sponge into smaller pieces so it's more convenient to use. Add one piece into some clean water and squeeze out the excess water. And then you can carefully erase the watercolor paint. Turn the sponge around and clean it with clear water from time to time so you can always use the clean side. You can not only remove mistakes, but you can also use the sponge for different techniques such as adding details with a stamp. You can cut out any shape using some thick paper or cardboard and then use it as a stencil. Now all you need to do is erase the paint inside the stencil. Or you can also just use the edge of the paper to clean the edges of your painting. And for example when you don't have a tape or the paint ran through the tape and ruined your perfect white frame, you can just remove it with this eraser. This erasing technique works with thicker paper such as watercolor paper. I tried it on print paper, but this doesn't work. But if you work with watercolors and watercolor paper, this is great. And if you want, you can even erase your whole painting and no one will notice that you actually messed it up the first time. Wait until the paper has dried and you can go back and repaint the area. Let me know in the comments below what hack you found the most useful and helpful and if you have any other tips and tricks, share it in the comments below as well so we can spread the hacks that will make your life easier. I hope you liked this video and found it helpful. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up to support this channel. If you want to see more tips and tricks, you can check out the video right here. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe for more arts and crafts to the videos in the future and to turn notifications on so you don't miss out on any new video. I upload it on Thursdays and on Saturdays. Thank you so much for watching guys, have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye!